Welcome to this ASP.NET video on caching. This is part one of two parts. We're going to cover page level caching and some of the new table caching features that are supported in SQL Server 2000 and SQL Server 2005. To get started, I'm going to build a simple new website um, in Visual Basic. And the first thing I want to show you is caching at a single page uh, level only. And first, what I'm going to do is simply spit out the the, the current date time by calling response write on the system date time now just to make sure it's working. Now page level caching is going to allow us to tell ASP.NET not to retransmit or re reprocess this file every time. It's going to be cached for us. Notice when I hit refresh the time is ticking up. So let's make a couple changes. I'm going to remove this because I have a little bit nicer uh, control ready to go that I wrote called this uh, time label. And it's going to show the same date and time, but it's going to be a little bit nicely, for, more, it'll have a nicer format to it. Okay. So that new control looks like this. So whenever I hit refresh, you can see the little green bars ticking up to indicate how many seconds has elapsed. That'll give us a nice visual clue as to when the page actually refreshes. So I'll keep this running and go back and add um, a feature that's been around since ASP.NET 1.0 days, and that's page level output caching. So that's a special directive I add here to the page, right there. And I need to set two things. The, the duration of the cache, I'll set it to uh, five seconds and we'll have it apply the caching to every page irrespective of the query string that's passed in. So now when I hit refresh I'll get one for 47 but you notice over the next five seconds it's staying as is and they're just ticked over to, to 52. So that's page level output caching. Now caching is great but where it really shows its um, benefits to a site is when you're doing some fairly heavy processing on the back end like maybe making a call to a database and that's what we're going to add in right now. So I'm going to change this cache to 20 seconds and now let's go and connect our system to a database. So we're going to connect our website to a database that's running on SQL Server 2005. We're using 2005 instead of SQL Server Express because I can easily show the tracing that's going on behind the scenes or all the communication with SQL Server. And that is on a different computer, my main computer, Deskzilla. And I've created an account for me. The database will use a simple Northwinds. Good. Okay, I'm going to take that connection string right now and copy that to the clipboard and put it inside my web config file. So under connection strings, normally this is added for me if I use one of the wizards. In this case, I have to put it in by hand. So we're going to add a connection string, which is what you just saw. I'm going to add the password directly. Now, this is not best practices. However, you can encrypt this username and password combination, and we'll show that in the tips and tricks video. But you could also use integrated security. In this case, the, this virtual machine that I'm recording the demo on is not on the same box as the database. And finally, let's give this connection string a name. Okay, good. So let's use that. If we go back to our page, I'm going to code this one up by hand. Um, we need two things, a, a SQL data source, and that represents our, our, our SQL command that talks to the database, and that's going to run on the server. And let's see, the connection string, I'm going to put this on a new line, the connection string comes from the connection strings NW, the one I just added, and finally the SQL uh, select statement, select command, looks like um, I'm going to get three columns from the customer's table. Customer ID, the company name, and the contact name. Turns out you need that DBO to clarify the schema name from the database. That's, that's crucial in one of the uh, the, the built-in the SQL Server 2005 database caching. So let's go ahead and see, oops, I need one more thing. So we have our connection, now I need a data grid and give it an ID. It also is a server control and the data source ID is the one above it. 
That's a DS1. And that should be good. Let's take a look at it. Now remember, this time we set the cache duration to 20 seconds. So when I hit refresh, it's not making a query back to the database. In fact, we can switch over to this profiler now and enable that. Let me clear it out. Now when we go back to our page and hit refresh, notice there's no database traffic going back to the system. So we have to wait for 20 seconds to elapse, and there's our query. Now this is a great simple way of doing data caching. However, there's a problem. If this data somehow changes on the back end, you would want this page, the, the cached version of this page, to be thrown away and refreshed immediately. Now that's been something that's been difficult to do in the past and is now easily supported with ASP.NET 2.0. And The technique I'm going to show you now works both on SQL Server 2000 and 2005. To do that, we first need to enable the database to support this table dependency caching. So in the .NET Framework 2.0, there's a command line tool, ASP.NET reg, ASP underscore reg SQL, that I've already got the command line here, where we're going to enable the table caching for the customer's table in the simple Northwinds database. So I execute that. Now you can see it did some stuff on the back end. Let me show you what it did. If I go into the Northwinds table, if I hit refresh, there's the customer's table. But now I have an extra table, the SQL cache tables. And I also on this customer table, I have a trigger that whenever there's a change to this table, it writes a row into this ASP.NET special table. And it, that's going to be polled by ASP.NET to see if there are any changes to the system. It sounds complicated, but it actually is very simple in action. Let me show you. So here's the data that we have. We want this page to change whenever we change a row over here. So to enable this caching, I have to do two things. I've, I've, we've set it up for the database. Now I need to set it up for my website. I have to make an entry in the web config. I have to go to the caching and enable SQL cache dependency and enable it first to true and set the polling time equal to 2,000 milliseconds. And then I want to do that on the database specified, let's see, I want to add for the connection string NW, which is the connection string up here, and I, I need to give it a, a, a distinct name as well. Okay, that's good for the web config. Now if we go back to our default page, we need to enable that caching here on this page. And that's simply by adding one line or one little line here in the output cache called SQL dependency. And that's equal to NW colon and the name of the table. NW from Northwinds. NW customers. Now if we go back here and hit refresh, we see we have the table at 41 seconds and it's going to stay here in the cache. If we go back to our tracing, if we scroll down to the bottom, we see that it's it's hitting the database every couple of seconds. So let me clear that for you. See there's a cache polling query, another one, another one, but it works it works pretty well. Watch if we go change a line of code. Let me hit refresh. I have to hit that window of 20 seconds. So if we change this to a different company like Frostwolf and go here and hit refresh, it shows up right away. So that that works really well. In fact, if we go back and look at the caching, you can see there was some notification back and forth that the tables changed, but it worked right away. So if we change this to my name, switch back and hit refresh, we get the change right away. Now this is great because it works with SQL Server 2000 and 2005, but 2005 introduces this new concept called the broker service, and this is a means to allow um, ASP.NET to serve as a client to where it can be notified if there's a change and it will have set up a dialog between ASP.NET 2.0 and SQL Server 2005. To enable that, it's very easy. It's the reason why we're showing you here with SQL Server 2005. Again, keep in mind that this version we're showing now is going to be polling every couple of seconds. So when I hit refresh, it kicks off the query and starts the poll. If I go back to the site and simply change this to um, command notification and go back here and hit refresh, Oh yeah, I forgot I need to add one line of code. I, If you want any code executed when your system is running, you need to create something called a global application class.